Hey folks, Captain Dave here. This is going to be my absolute last attempt out of, I don't know, how many Snelling videos have I done over the course of the years since 2012. And this is going to be my last attempt at trying to show you how to do a Snell, and it's not really the point that I was making in the first place. What I was doing is I was on YouTube and I was looking around at Snelling videos just to see how other people do it because I have the need to know. And I taught, I saw a guy, he was taking cord similar to this, he was taking a big ass hook, and he was snelling this hook, and I mentioned to him in the comment section that I really prefer a turned in eye. To me, this is when it's done correctly. Not that this is never going to work, or that it's totally incorrect, I prefer a turned in eye. And that's what I was trying to do in my last video. So we're going to go over this one more time and I'm just going to kind of discuss what the reason being, okay? Um, let's say you go that, no, let's say you go this way. You go through the eye, right? You bring your cord down, you hold it. And I pinch it there. And I bring my other end around, I'm making a loop, and all I'm doing is laying it there, and I'm pinching that also. My finger being here, and this holding the line, and my other fingers backing up the, um, the hook is an integral part of it for me. You take this, and you turn, you turn, and you work your way down the shank this way. All right, and you turn, and then you hold it. And what I normally do is I hold this with my with my other hand, just like I'm doing now, and I pull this with my teeth. Because mono will get all twisty and everything on you, where this parachute cord, it's only looping around like maybe once like this, okay? So what you do is then you just yank this, and you'll literally hear it practically snap into place. Okay, when your snell is done correctly you should be able to pull this back and it just looks like a succession of barrels with the tag end coming out that's when it's done hundred percent right okay and you really don't need any tools you don't need any straws you don't really need anything it's just that quick you just saw me do it right so when my biggest problem was when I was discussing this with the fellow on the other YouTube channel is when you pull this tight, and the reason I'm mentioning it is because it's happened to me. I'm light tackle fishing. I'm not fishing with, what is this, a uh, 135-pound test uh, Cortland uh, parachute cord? No, I'm not fishing with that. I'm fishing with 20, maybe 40, 50 for a heavier bottom leader. But here's what it's doing. It goes into the groove of the hook right there. Most of these places where the hook uh, wire is bent around like that, that's not really, in many hooks, that's not really a comfort comfortable little spot right in there. So when you push this up, there it is. There's your first bend, right? Then your second bend is practically like this. Because that's how you're fishing it. Alright, that's how you're fishing it. So that's, to me, this is bend one, this is bend two. Right? And I don't really care for that. I've had this break. And, you know, I'm using light tackle, I'm light tackle fishing. So, that's the way it is without a turned in eye. Now let's hurry up here and just... Go over here and let's pretend this is, you know, my boat. I already have a line spool holder on my shelf on my console. And you know why? Because the Jetty Wolf is so damn cool. It's like nobody else's boat out there. I got cool stuff going on. And I love it. <laughs> All right. So here's what you do. You go through the eye, right? You hold it. Now, you, on mono, here's the deal. you got to work around this wanting to curl on you all the time. 
So you go through there, same thing. Now you're going to lay the hook, lay this part just right up against there and pinch it. Now, this, is, this loop is 100% free, but you're just holding it back this way, right? And you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Who cares, right? And then automatically, like breathing, my finger comes up and holds it. Now, what I was saying, mono gets all curly on you. Look. Oh boy, that's nice, huh? So what I what I do is I hold this out and I grab this with my teeth. And I draw it down, and it goes, wha bam right into place. Okay? There you go. Now, that's probably too many damn turns. You don't need to make that many turns. The hook literally has to break in half for this to break. But here's the big deal. I slide this on back. Man, that's tight. I slide the little noose back. And if you look right here, this is all I was talking about to the guy on YouTube. And this is what I wanted to pass on to you folks. And some people can't see, couldn't see it or whatever, and that disturbs me. But here's the deal. Can you see what a straight shot that is? Bam. No turning, no nothing, no undue pressure on the line, okay? And that's all I'm discussing. That's all I'm talking about. Now, how many times have you been in a tackle place? Let's say you're at w Wally's World, and they got, they're full of it there. I mean, well, they've got packages of those Eagle Claw um, little snelled hooks for freshwater fishing with a loop on the end. Here's exactly what they look like. Okay, if you've never seen it, this is exactly what they look like, and they're all in a package. Okay. Well, geez. You know, when you're trying to show stuff, it's a lot, a lot harder. This is all what they look like. And they're all sitting there in a the little snelled package, right? If you look at those hooks, and I mean, I don't know what people are doing, but I, I'm, this is something I've paid attention to my whole life, is that they're always turned in eyes. They're not this, because what do they, what do they tie any snells with? It's like 10 pound test. You get a, okay, I mean, I can't tell you how many bass I've lost in my whole, in my life to stupid mistakes when I was a kid, but if it was, 10 pound test on a hook like that, and all of a sudden the bass jumps or whatever, boom, snap. There goes your nice little snell package. That you'd be throwing that in the trash because you think something's wrong. Right? So, what it all boils down to is all I was trying to show everybody in my last video was the fact that a turned in eye and a snell is the perfect scenario. You can tie your hooks. I don't care. You can tie to an eye. You can use a hook like this. You can go pin fishing with a hook like this. It doesn't matter to me. All I'm trying to do was pass on the information that I've been doing this exactly like that for probably close to 10 years with 50 pound mono, exactly like this stuff, this Cajun Red. Believe it or not, this stuff isn't that bad. It's got some memory, but it's, it's some pretty tough stuff. Okay. I, I kind of like it. I don't know why. I just kind of like it. Maybe it's my favorite because my, one of my favorite colors is red. I don't know. So it catches fishermen, not fish. But it catches fish. But when I'm flo float rig fishing, I'm using a little thin 20 like this. And let me go into here, and I'm using these little Matsuo black chrome hooks. When I'm float rig fishing, 
we're using this hook right there. All right, that's a size two, number two. And this is like a five or six odd hook. Look at the size difference there, folks. All right. That's the difference. This big chunk of mullet goes on there or some kind of thing, right? Live shrimp goes on here through the horn. So I'm taking 20 pound test, this 20 like right here, and I am snelling this little hook. Do I want abrasion up in here when I got that, you know, I'll say it, 10 pound trout on? I've already caught my 10 pound trout, so. But I don't want any little abrasion. I don't want abrasion through here, okay? So that's the hook I use for trout fishing. And this I might use. I don't even use them, really. I might use this thing for, um, you know, super chunk baits or something. But um, as I said in the video, these Matsuos, I mean, look at that thing. That thing is unbelievable. These are so sharp that you literally have to watch out for it. Um, when I'm bottom fishing with a little bigger ones than these, the, uh, the tips are so delicate. The tips are so delicate that if you're banging into the jetty rocks or something, I, I constantly, you know, kind of preach to people, uh, check your hook, check your hook, check your hook. If not, I'm checking it for you. Because if that tip folds over, um, you'll be setting a hook on fish and then you'll lose them. So, there it is. That's with a straight hook. This is with a turned in eye. I make it just, believe it or not, I make it a practice that all my hooks that I'm going to bottom fish with and float rig fish with, and I'm saying bottom fish in the river, okay? I'm not, you can bottom fish offshore and you can still use that that hook right there okay but um i'm just telling you that i'm making a point that all my hooks have the turned in eye because that's what i'm doing with them all right so that was enough of that whoo boy did i hope everybody got it this time mm. it's five o'clock somewhere thanks for watching